Hey guys, uh, Damon at um, Black Warrior Lures. Experimenting with some Sabiki jigs, Sabiki rigs. Um, I know you got a lot of you guys like those Sabikis, you know, skipjack rigs, skipjack jigs, whatever. That's what I'm trying to ex experiment with making now. And as you can see, it's a sort of a simpler version of uh, some of my more complicated flies like this that have the dodger on it and that's just really complicated it takes a long time to make these but just studying some of the sabiki rigs that you guys use that's something that's far simpler but has a lot of the same features um, and so I'm going to show you how I'm making these first of all I start with a number 4 3366 mustad hooks my favorite hook of all time it's a, just a J hook basic do all do everything J hook no offset eye or anything like that it makes it easy to tie that's why I prefer them um, and so I just come here and lay down some thread one two three four five locks in the stuff there and then I um, let me get the uh, oh. I usually get some uh, lead core line here to Add a little bit of extra weight to, to it. You know, the weight's really gonna. This is really what we call an underbody. Uh, well, you know, I'm not really trying to add much weight. You know, you're gonna be fishing these like you would any sabiki rig or, you know, anything like that or jig, what ha what have you. But this does help to get down some. So we put super glue on there for that. Okay, and then we go back not touching turns or anything and they come back just to the where the hook begins to bend a little and, uh, super glue never really spreads all the way down exactly the way you want it this bottle's getting low and, um, and so we'll wrap back up not touching turns or anything Right there, right there to the tie-in point. Leave about an eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch, or you know, three sixteenths of an inch, maybe to, to tie stuff in materials. And then here we come here, wrap it around. This gives it a bigger underbody for the body, as you can see, and it gives it a little bit more weight, so it'll help it get down a little bit more. We just wrap that just like that, all the way up to the tie-in point there. And that just snips that off. This is 18 pound uh, thread, 18 pound lead core line. Uh, next step is to we'll use this. This is a fake. This is a fake. It's a synthetic marabou, but it has some. If you see that synthetic marabou there, it has you know flash and stuff already in it. And so what we'll do is we measure the length of the hook plus about half, right? And this is what we call the, um, and when we tie this in, they call it the shuttlecock, I believe, over there in the other parts of the, well, the British t fly tires and whatnot. I wish I had one of those automatic fly reel, fly uh, things. Um, so what we're going to do here is tie that in just like that. And just bring that back all the way to the front like so. Don't again. Don't need touching turns or anything. That's good. And then this right here is guess what? Good old fashioned. Try to get a longer piece. Um, this is good old fashioned yarn. Just good old Wally World. Just yarn that you would get in the knitting section or whatever. And just you just it's, it has four strands on it. You just take it, rip it apart. Good body material. Uh, you just tie thousands and thousands of flies on it. And right there at your tie-in point, right there. Same thing. All the way back. I'm not a fast tire. I mean, these commercial guys can just tie like... They're done. <laughs> you know, half hitch there. Same basic procedure. And this is where that underbody really kicks in for you. Um, yeah, this is the way we're going to do this. Uh... So we'll spin this forward. I'm hoping you're getting a good view of that. And right there to the point and then come back. And sort of help fills in the gaps there. So you get three. Because we'd have to do like 10 or 15. Um, ah, 
See, that's what I hate when it does it like that. It comes down off that thread there. That's the s most frustrating part about it. We'll come back forward like so. And that, see how that wraps up pretty well. Right there, about like that is good enough. And again, we just have to... This is where I kind of wish I had an automatic retrieving bobbin here. It makes it a lot faster, but in the end, I'm going to lock the... Oops. Kick something off there. Lock that thread in there. Lock the... Just keep that there. Then I'm going to do something that I haven't done with the others. And I'm going to put a tuff of red on here. Uh, I don't know, there's just this thing about tying flies and putting a little bit of red in just so you can have that simulated bleeding bleeding gills or whatever, silver bleeder gill thing. Just a little tough. You know, just a little tough. It's hard for me to tie a fly the same way twice. I mean, I have to almost always do something a little extra just because it just, I get bored out of my mind if I don't. One, two, three. And there's that. Just a little bit of a red there on that. And what we're going to do now is just form up our head. And that's, that's basically the fly. We're going to form our head with a thread here. And try to cover all that up. It's kind of hard to do. I'm working with a very thick thread. This, this thread is a um, um, really not fly tying thread. It's really way too thick. It's really, again, it's a bunch of thread that I had from my backpack making days. And, and I figure why not use it for something. But anyway, here we do our whip finish. One. And we'll come back and just you know, one. Two. Gracious, boy, is that an ugly hat or what? And so, I'm trying to tighten it down and get it done. It doesn't always work right. And then I just tip. A lot of guys use some sort of varnish or something. I use a super glue here, just a dab of it there to lock the threads in. Um, really need a little bit lighter thread for this, but uh, so that locks that in. And um, what I'll do here, you can fish it just like that, it'll be just fine. Um, but what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to trim that up. And then we're going to just put in our eyes. Turn that 90 degrees. Uh, dab of glue there. It takes a little bit because it soaks in and it helps harden up the whole unit there as well. Put an eye there. Turn it 90 degrees the other side, dab of glue, and then another eye. And just drop it in place. You know, turn it top side, align it. Um, and there you go. There's one Sabiki rig there. Sabiki rig, skipjack jig, whatever you want to call it. Uh, just like that. You know, in those, the reason I put the eye, you can fish it without the eyes, but the eyes, I mean, you may not be able to hear, but the eyes give it just a little bit of a rattle. And when you're down below that dam in that turbulent current, I think it does. You see, it has the flash on it, has a little bit of red. You know, I probably just to save time would probably just not even worry about putting that on there. Um, you know, just keep it solid like that. And you rig up three, four of these, you know two, three, four of these on a rod and, and then just you, know, you can do all your skipjack things. You know, let me know what you guys think about that. Thinking about just putting these on the website. Um, they're very simple and uh, because it's been very difficult to get below the dam uh, to, to fish for bait but you know while I'm waiting for everything to sort of you know clear up below the dam hey I can just sit here and tie sabiki rigs and to be in skipjack jigs and, and really get going and, and, that, and that whole thing becomes quite solid and, uh, and there you have it Sabiki rigs, skipjack jigs from Black Warrior Lures uh, if you guys want to sample these out 
shoot me a message, shoot me an email, and I can make you up a few of them so you can take these below the dam and see if they work for yourself just to see um, if, you, if you want that. And um, with that, I will talk to you guys later. See ya.